a reminder to everyone who's attending that uh, this webinar will be recorded. Uh, the recording has started uh, and will be shared with all registrants. All right, everyone, welcome. It's 11 2, so we'll start. Um, my name is Mohammed Hassan, and my pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Specialist at Electricity Human Resources Canada. Um, I'm, I'm joining you all today from Kingston, Ontario, the traditional homeland of Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Huron Wendat. I want to take this opportunity to thank these nations for their care and stewardship of the shared land. Uh, welcome everyone to our Equal by 30 Self-Assessment Tool Webinar 1. Joining me today from Natural Resources Canada are uh, Annette Holas, uh, Manager International Engagement, Zinzi McKinde, uh, Policy Analyst, and Laura Conrad, Policy Analyst and they will be uh, able to answer some of the questions uh, specific to Equal by 30 campaign. Uh, and also uh, Vicky Veron, uh, Senior Project Coordinator at EHRC, who will be monitoring our chat throughout. So before I proceed, I just want to highlight one very important thing that we are gathered here today not just to embark on a journey towards more significant equity and inclusivity within the energy sector, but today marks a day of profound significance as well. Today, we stand in solidarity on the International Day for Elimination of Racial Discrimination and World Down Syndrome Day. Both occasions remind us of continuous work against discrimination and the pressing need to advocate for the rights and inclusion of all individuals, irrespective of uh, their racial backgrounds or genetic differences. As we delve into the functionalities and the transformative potential of uh, the Equal by 30 self-assessment tool, let's all commit to reflecting these values in our actions and initiatives, uh, championing a world where equality, inclusion, and diversity are not just aspirations, but actual realities. A bit about the campaign. Uh, Equal by 30 is a public commitment by public and private sector organizations to work towards uh, to advance inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility in the clean energy sector by 2030. Equal by 30 ask organizations, companies, and governments to endorse principles, then take a concrete action to accelerate the participation of uh, women in the clean energy sector and close the gender gap. Now, let's take a look at a very important aspect of any e equality, equity, diversity, inclusion, accessibility initiative. Evaluating the progress of implementing uh, EDIA practices within the workforce is not just a moral imperative, but a strategic advantage for organization. Uh, through systemic evaluations uh, like this self-assessment tool um, and opportunities uh, of similar natures, businesses can identify the areas of success and room for improvement, ensuring that uh, equity, diversity, inclusion and accessibility efforts are not just performed uh, in silos, are not just performative, but impactful. Uh, regular assessments of such initiative can foster an inclusive culture that values the unique perspective of contributions of every employee, leading to increased innovation, employee satisfaction and intention. Moreover, uh, I, I would add that by embracing and actively pr promoting such principles, organizations can enhance their reputation, attract a diverse talent pool, 
and achieve superior performance outcomes. In essence, the continuous evaluation of EDIA practices serves as a catalyst for creating more equitable, diverse, accessible, and inclusive workforce, uh, driving organizational success and progress. So the benefits of completing this particular self-assessment, uh, as you can see on your screen, is identification of the strengths and weaknesses of the organization, also benchmarking and progress tracking. But that is not where it stops. It leads you to more strategic planning, increased visibility and leadership, as well as the ability to network and collaborate with other equal by 30 signatories. Some of the key features of uh, this self-assessment tool that I want to bring to your attention is that by completing the self-assessment checklist, your organization will better understand the progress. Like I said, uh, also this tool is completely voluntary and confidential. Um, so uh, this tool is meant to be an internal check-in. Um, it's meant for you to understand where your organization is excelling and where there's a room for improvement. And we do not expect your organization to have implemented all the actions listed. Uh, they are goals to work towards on the road to uh, 2030. The creation of this tool led to two separate editions, Canadian edition and international edition. And the fact that we have two different uh, versions of the same self-assessment tool, I, I want to highlight a little bit more th that the creation of a separate self-assessment tool for Canadian organizations uh, alongside an international version is driven by a unique context of Canada's social and cultural landscape, particularly with respect to uh, our Indigenous communities. Uh, the, the Canadian tool integrates a significant indigenous component, recognizing the vital importance of incorporating indigenous perspectives, rights, and knowledges into our frameworks and practices. Uh, this particular distinction underscores the necessity to tailor approaches uh, that respect and uphold the values, histories, and future aspiration of indigenous communities within Canada and globally as well. Meanwhile, the international tool is designed to cater to a broader global audience, addressing diverse challenges and opportunities in advancing equity and inclusivity. By adopting this dual approach, uh, we ensure that the tools are relevant, impactful, and sensitive to distinct needs and circumstances of organizations operating within and beyond Canada's borders. Uh, Having said that, it's not necessary that uh, if you are an organization that is not located in Canada uh, for you to only use international edition, you can also refer to the Canadian edition of the self-assessment tool uh, if you are focusing on inclusion of uh, your local indigenous population. Now let's move to the instructions for self-assessment tool before I actually show you the self-assessment tool itself. So the first step is designate a team member, uh, which is choose a team member with a rich understanding of your organization's uh, equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility policies and practices, what is written and what is not written, uh, to spearhead the completion of the assessment. This will likely involve coordinating with various teams to gather the comprehensive data needed for this assessment. And then you will move to the next step, the step two of gathering organizational information. Uh, in this step, you will collect detailed organizational information that reflects the campaign's core objectives and the challenges uh, and the themes identified through the 2021 Equal by 30 reporting framework. These include equal pay, leadership, opportunities, inclusive culture, fair management, career development, and workplace safety and harassment. Moving on to the third step, fill in the assessment. 
you will complete the assessment to the best of your team's ability, uh, to the best of your organization's ability. Each checkbox you tick represents a step towards your organization has taken uh, in the right direction of achieving uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. Any unchecked box highlights areas where you can focus your development efforts. If there are any questions that you cannot answer while you're filling the assessment, feel free to leave them. Step four is the reflection on the findings of the assessment. So what you as an organization need to do is reflect on the assessment's outcome and celebrate the strength and the progress you have uncovered and consider the actions that led to these achievements. And then move on to creating an action plan uh, to improve on the areas identified using the benchmark implementation, measurement, and transparency to gauge where you stand and where you can enhance your efforts. And the last step of this self-assessment, the step five, is about sharing your results within your organization, where you share your findings with your team, with your organization, to benefit from a tra transparent assessment process and increase support for an ongoing actions. Uh, keep a record of these results to monitor your progress as you work towards the 2030 goals. You are also encouraged to engage with the Equal by 30 team who are here to support you on this journey. So I'm going to take a pause and uh, ask my uh, amazing colleague, Vicky, if there are any questions at this stage. So far, there aren't anything in the chat, Mohammed. Great, thank you very much. So now let's take a look at some of the important sections of this tool. So this tool is structured into seven sections, each commencing with a leading question that serves as compass directing us to deeply reflect on where we stand and where we aspire to be followed by a glossary of terms. The sections that are part of this tool are equal pay, equal leadership, equal opportunities, inclusive culture, fair management, career development, and workplace safety and harassment. So I'm going to share the next slide and you can use your cell phone cameras to uh, scan the QR code, which will take you to international uh, version of the self-assessment tool. Um, but we will be uh, sharing the um, Canadian version uh, as a follow-up um, to this uh, webinar later. I'm gonna take a moment for all of us to be able to scan this so that we can all look at the tool in the real time. Hi, Mohammed. We have one question in the chat, if that's okay. Yes, please. Um, we have, would you suggest we use this tool annually to track progress or is timing up to each organization to decide? It's actually up to each organization to decide uh, uh, how often they want to use. I, I would highly recommend using it annually so that you can see uh, how much you have achieved in one year. And also that depends on the action plan that uh, you uh, form as part of this uh, assessment process. Thanks, that's a lovely question. So let's move to the tool itself that you can see on the screen. I'm gonna just increase the size so that you all can see it clearly. So 
as I mentioned earlier, that this is the uh, international version. Uh, shout out to all the international participants who are joining us from all across the globe um, for this webinar. So this is the exact tool that you will be able to access uh, through Equal by 30 website uh, under the publications tab. Uh, and then if you look at uh, the, for the second page, uh, you'll exactly see what I showed you earlier, the different sections. And then if you move on to the next part of this uh, self-assessment tool, it talks about the steps that we discussed earlier. Uh, step one of designating a team member and step two of gathering organizational information. Uh, step three of filling in the assessment. Step four of reflecting on the findings of these assessment. And step five of sharing your results within your organization. There also uh, there's also a link embedded for you to contact Equal by 30 campaign team um, for further questions. Should you wish to discuss uh, any available resources or concrete steps to take to address the challenges of your organization? So the first section, equal pay. Does the organization have a commitment and or process in place to ensure all employees receive equal compensation for substantially the same work. And you have few options. Uh, as you can see under the tab of no, uh, if you select no, the organization does not have a process in place to ensure this. It will take you to few supplementary questions like, but we strive to learn more. We have a plan we intend to implement within the next 12 to 18 months. Some of our offices or businesses have implemented our plan or other. Uh, and you can use the comment box at the end of each section to describe any action your organization has taken in this area. And if you have already uh, have a commitment or process in place, uh, to ensure uh, all employees receive equal compensation for substantially the same work, you will definitely be clicking yes. The organization has a commitment process for equal pay that has been implemented across all levels of the organization. Or the organization has a gender equality specific commitment and process to ensure equal pay that has been implemented across all level of the organization. And then you can see in the commitment section, uh, there are two questions uh, and you can e click a check on either or or both. And uh, we <coughs> have a standalone policy that addresses equal pay for equal work of equal value. And this policy has been circulated to all staff ensuring they are aware of this of its significance. And we have made a public written statement that is easily accessible outlining our organization's commitment to equal pay. Now, even if your organization has not circulated a standalone policy or you have not made a public written statement, uh, this will serve as a good benchmarking tool what is needed to be done in terms of uh, equal pay going forward. And then this tool talks about the measurement and implementation towards uh, all employees receiving equal compensation uh, for substantially the same work. And that part talks about uh, the whether the organization has an action plan to ensure equal pay, that pay equity exists across all levels of the organization. The next question or the next checkbox is the organization conducts pay equity exercises, ensuring that women dominated roles such as human resources have their value assessed and wages compared to the traditionally 
male dominated roles and adjust it accordingly to demonstrate that they bring equal value to the organization. And the next question or the prompt is the organization takes an intersectional approach to pay equity with tangible plans to ensure employees uh, with intersecting identities are compensated to the same extent as their counterparts who are men. The organization publishes salary ranges internally and provide managers with resources and support to ensure bias free decision making in the hiring and promotional processes. Followed by the prompt around the organization track performance and promotion rates by gender, uh, disaggregated by race, ethnicity, ability, gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, and or age group to identify biases. Going on to the next page, and we are still on the section of equal pay, you will see that the measurement and implementation uh, section is continued. And the next prompt is the organization's policies align with uh, territorial pay equity legislation, which depends on where your organization is located and even if they are not legally required to comply with it. And the organization publishes the pay scale for a position in all job postings. And the organization's strategy and action plans are developed in consultation with industry professionals to determine best practices and how to track matrix. Now, like I said earlier, that even if you are not able to check all these boxes, these prompts and check boxes will serve as a great tool to develop an action plan, how you can achieve equal pay goals uh, for your organization uh, by 2030. And then the next section within the equal pay addresses the area of transparency and accountability, which is very important for any equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility uh, related initiatives. And the first prompt in this section talks about we report publicly to organizational stakeholders, board members, and on the organization website on progress and strategy, commitments, targets, best practices, and areas for improvement. And we share our findings internally through all levels of the organization and tie them to compensation and bonus structures to ensure accountability. And then, as you can see at the end of equal pay section, and it's it's the same for every section um, in this self-assessment tool, there are additional uh, notes and comments area where you could use uh, for any additional action your organization has taken uh, that are not listed or that may not be listed above uh, them. Let's move to the second section. And in the interest of time, I, I will uh, be reading some of the prompts uh, just for us to get a better understanding of uh, each section. So, the next section talks about the equal leadership and the, the leading question is, is there a commitment and or process at the organization to ensure equal representation of women in senior leadership, regardless of gender expression, age, ability, race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, and or socioeconomic status? And again, the, there are options to select no and yes. And if you select no, the organization does not have the process in place to ensure this. You have options to select uh, the follow up uh, questions or follow up prompts. But we strive to learn more. Uh, we have a plan we intend to implement within the next 12 to 18 months and so on and so forth. And if your organization already has a commitment and a, or a process to ensure equal representation of women in senior leadership, then you will be definitely selecting uh, 
yes, the organization has a commitment and process to ensure equal representation and leadership. And the next prompt talks about the organization has a gender equality specific commitment and process to ensure equal representation and leadership that has been implemented across all levels of the organization. And then the commitment section uh, pretty much talks about uh, the same areas that we uh, reviewed earlier. Uh, that talks about uh, having a corporate policy that has been circulated internally, uh, as well as uh, having a public written statement, which is easily accessible, um, that outlines your organization's commitment to equal representation and leadership. And then comes the measurement and implementation section. And I, I want to take this opportunity to highlight uh, a couple of uh, um, measurement and implementation prompts. Uh, the first one is the organization includes gender parity across all levels in all departments as part of a strategic agenda. And the second is the organization ensures 30 to 50 percent of board seats are filled by women and gender diverse people. And you can go through each prompt and uh, reflect on uh, and reflect on th these prompts and gather the information within your organization uh, to see whether uh, this is something that your organization is already doing or that needs to be done in future for you. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, some of these prompts may not be applicable to your organization based on your organizational structure or where your organization is located. So you can just ignore that uh, section. <clears throat> and then it's pretty similar for transparency and accountability piece where um, we are talking about uh, uh, reporting publicly to organizational stakeholders, board members, and organization's website, as well as uh, you are sharing your findings internally. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to share your findings internally with your team members um, and uh, everyone from senior leadership to the frontline individual contributors. Similar to the earlier section, the additional notes and comments areas available for uh, you to uh, um, add anything that is not listed above uh, in the equal leadership section. And then we move to the next section that is equal opportunities. Starting with the leading question, is there a commitment and or process to ensure equal opportunities for all employees, regardless of their gender identity, gender expression, age, ability, race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, sexuality, and or socioeconomic status. Once again, you will be prompted with the yes and no questions. Um, and this time I'm going to read the yes one first. Yes, the organization has a commitment and a process to ensure equal opportunities for uh, all employees. The organization has a gender equality specific commitment and process to ensure equal opportunities for employees. And in case you are going to be checking the no option, no, the organization does not have a process in place to ensure this. There is always supplementary options, but we are strive to learn more. We have a plan we intend to implement within the next 12 to 18 months. Some of our offices or businesses have implemented our plans or other section, which you can use the comment box at the end of each section uh, to list that. The commitment section once again addresses uh, the equal opportunity policies as well as the public written statements. And that brings us to the most important part uh, that can help you develop your action plan going forward, the measurement and implementation section. Um, and this time I'm going to read the third uh, option uh, that is there that women 
and gender diverse employees have access to internal uh, mentoring programs and or sponsorships for senior leadership and access to employee resource groups. Once again, I want to remind you all that uh, you don't need to check all the boxes. The fact that you are as an organization trying uh, to uh, review your practices, you are already on the right track and any box that is not checked is uh, the road to achieving equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility in your organization. After the measurement and implementation section, you will see that the, the section of transparency and accountability uh, is there uh, where you can uh, disclose whether you are reporting it publicly or uh, you're sharing any findings internally with your organization. Which brings us to the next section, which is the inclusive culture, uh, starting with the leading question, does the organization have a commitment and process in place to foster and uphold an inclusive culture for all people, regardless of their gender identity, gender expression, age, ability, race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, sexuality, and or socioeconomic status, followed by no and yes questions and the section of commitment that talks about uh, whether you are circulating uh, these policies internally or, like I said earlier, uh, quite a few times, actually, uh, if you have a public written statement. Followed by the section of measurement and implementation uh, in the inclusive culture piece. And that takes us to the next section of the transparency and accountability. Um, and uh, also like all the previous section, there is space for additional notes and comments uh, for you all. Let's take a look at the next section, which is the fair management. Like all the other sections, fair management also has the same approach of starting with a leading question, followed by um, some yes and no options. And the no option, like all the previous sections, has the supplementary prompts of whether you strive to learn more, whether as an organization you have planned to, uh, to implement within the next 12 to 18 months. And if some of your offices or businesses have implemented the plan already. Which takes you to the next section of commitment uh, where again you have been asked uh, the question of uh, whether you are circulating uh, an internal acknowledgement on fair management as well as a public written statement. And then the same uh, method of the measurement and implementation is uh, available for you to benchmark your progress. Followed by the transparency and accountability section and additional notes and comments. Let's take a look at the career development piece. Uh, does the organization have a commitment and process in place to ensure equitable and supportive career development in it, which is available to all employees, regardless of their gender identity, gender expression, age, ability, race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, sexuality, and or socioeconomic status. Uh, once again, prompted with the options of yes and no, followed by the section on commitment, uh, measurement and implementation, and the transparency and accountability section. And as you scroll down to the next section, you will see the last part of this self-assessment tool, uh, the workplace safety and harassment. Uh, once again, starting with a leading question of does the organization have a commitment and process in place to ensure workplace health and safety and freedom from harassment for all employees, regardless of their gender identity, gender expression, age, ability, race, ethnicity, 
religion, sexual orientation, sexuality, and or socioeconomic status. Followed by the yes and no options. The section on commitment, measurement and implementation area that will give you uh, a lot of information to plan for future if you are not already doing some of the measurement and implementation pieces. And that brings us to the next page of workplace safety and harassment that talks about the transparency and accountability area and a space for additional notes and comments. And that's where the self-assessment part of this tool ends, but the tool continues with uh, a quick glossary of terms uh, that are used uh, that you may see throughout this document and you, you may need more context. So please, uh, by all means, use these terminologies uh, and these definitions are taken from federal legal and government agencies within Canada, as well as internationally recognized uh, sources. And you will see those sources cited um, at the end of each page. With this, I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for attending uh, the webinar. However, we are not done yet. We still have some option opportunity to address any questions you may have. So now this is the time, like if there are any questions that you want us to answer, um, we we are joined by um, Natural Resources Canada team uh, as well. Um, the fabulous uh, ladies who have been leading uh, this Equal by 30 initiative uh, for not just for Canada, but for all the signatories across the globe. So let's open the floor for questions. I see Zinzi, your hand is up. Yeah, this is less of a question, but I just wanted to say, um, I know Mohammed went through it, but it can seem a little bit overwhelming for sure, especially when we're listing so many different kind of identities. We know that the campaign started as a gender equality campaign, and if that is where you still are, that is completely 100% okay. We just wanted to expand it to recognize the different types of discrimination that many people face within the energy sector and within all sectors, of course. Um, but if you're still on the road of, you know, looking specifically at gender equality, that is a very worthy effort and we're here to support you no matter where you are sort of in that journey. Thank you very much, Zinzi, for uh, such a reassuring statement. Um, I cannot um, emphasize enough on the fact that, uh, yes, it's going to be overwhelming. Uh, the journey towards equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility, it, the road is not going to be easy. Uh, and that is why we need more and more support and networks like these uh, and uh, supportive uh, co-workers and colleagues like yourself uh, to be able to make this a collective approach, uh, make this uh, something that we all can do together as a, a one large uh, team uh, working towards uh, the betterment of our society and our organization. Okay, let's see if there are any questions or comments uh, from the audience. seeing none. I have one more thing to share with. Okay, there is somebody who is uh, like, I, I'm noticing something in the chat. Oh, thank you very much, Katrina. Uh, oh, thank you for the feedback. Uh, in terms of the feedback, uh, uh, a very quick reminder, you all will be receiving uh, a link to an anonymous survey. Uh, please make sure uh, that you find some time to fill that survey for us. It, it's going to help us improve uh, this experience uh, uh, in future. And also, if you have liked something, it will help us to uh, give shout outs to all the, the unsung heroes who are involved in uh, developing uh, a tool like this. Um, 
I do have one quick uh, announcement to make before we can um, call it. Uh, so let me go back and share uh, oh, my. There's one more question in the chat, Mohammed. Um, they uh -huh. asked uh, where they would be able to get the assessment tool. Absolutely. So like I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation that uh, if you go on Equal by 30 website, uh, uh, under the publication section, you will find both versions, the Canadian version as well as the international version. And there you go. The, the link is posted in chat. I'm going to share my screen one more time just to give you something to remember that the webinar too uh, is scheduled for Thursday, April 4th, same time, um, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, we would love to see you uh, join us again uh, where we will dive more deeper into this tool and uh, simulate some of the areas uh, of self-assessment. On that note, uh, thank you very much for oh. your time once again. Annette, do we have a comment or a question? Yeah, sorry. I just uh, I just wanted to thank you so much, Mohammed, and and thank you to everyone who is participating and. Um, um, I think, you know, clearly willing um, and uh, eager and interested in advancing idea within your your organization. We really appreciate you being here. Um, the The next webinar is, um, as uh, as Mohammed mentioned, on on April fourth. Um, and something else that we're we're trying to do in between this webinar and the next is, um, and some of you have probably heard from us already, uh, to secure some one on one consultations and and maybe some volunteers to to test out the tool, even if it's just looking at a you know a section or two um, to really provide us with 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 feedback and then you know the second webinar uh, we would hope to have you know some of you share your experiences using it um, you know maybe share some some feedback um, maybe some of you in your organizations have a tool that you're using already and you know that have, have already tested out what works and what doesn't and you know this is um you know not meant to be one definitive tool that you know that we we use forever more we we recognize that um it is very comprehensive and we've we've designed it in that in that way but you know there can always be improvements um there are always shifts in in the space as we all know and so we really want to hear that that feedback from all of you so uh you may hear some of you individually may hear from you uh it may hear from us to to see if you'd volunteer um to do that for us and and to help really make um the the second webinar really engaging and and to share experiences um and then um you know also you're you're welcome to to get in touch with with any of us i know that all of you would have received uh, muhammad's um contact contact information, um, but, you know, easily, uh, easy uh, enough to find us uh, on the Enercan team as well. Um, so just, yeah, really, really encourage you uh, to to take a hold of that opportunity if you're if you're willing and, and have a bit of time over the next couple of weeks. So just wanted to put out that um, that opportunity. Thank, Thank you, you very much uh, for reminding everyone about the consultation piece. Uh, it, we are really looking forward to, uh, and like what would make me the happiest person is if somebody reaches out to us versus us reaching out to you. Uh, that would show that you are more committed to work uh, towards uh, gender equality within your organization and even beyond in the realm of equity, diversity, inclusion and accessibility. I'm seeing some of you uh, uh, switching on your cameras. Um, you know, like if there are any questions, uh, this is the opportunity. Uh, we still have some time left, but if there are no questions, we can end this webinar now. Great. Once again, Faces of uh, solidarity. I like that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once again, on behalf of uh, um, Natural Resources Canada and uh, EHRC, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, take care.
have a great rest of your evening, morning, day, afternoon, wherever you are based on your time zone. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thanks. Thank so Hope much. to see you on the fourth. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Now. Bye. bye. Thanks you.